Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning class. I am teacher Yumi and I will be your JAD 103 DD instructor for today's lesson. Alright, today we are going to tackle about jigsaw. But before that, class, what do we get after discussing and discovering what jigsaw is? Okay, so after this lesson, you will be able to discuss jigsaw as an instructional strategy. And then you will also be able to explain how jigsaw is used in social studies instruction. And you will also develop a lesson that uses jigsaw in elementary social studies. Okay, so according to Helen Keller, alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. Okay, so we've all been part of that um, group activity. You know, the activity where one person takes the lead, leading some members to conclude their ideas are unwelcome, while others select few and write the other's coattails. And yet, something incredible happens when teamwork happens the way it's supposed to happen. Things change when everyone on the team is equally invested in the overall purpose and goal. So you find yourself working faster, finding mistakes more easily, and innovating better. Ultimately, you reach a point where your certain age person on your team has your back and both, um, both your job satisfaction and performance skyrocket. Okay, so as a cooperative learning strategy, Jigsaw was founded in Vygotsky's social constructivism theory, which suggests that children develop knowledge through social interaction. So the Jigsaw classroom is a cooperative learning technique that reduces racial conflict among school children through social interaction. So it promotes better learning, improves student motivation, and increases enjoyment of the learning experiences. Okay, so Jigsaw is a research-based cooperative learning technique invented and developed in the early 1970s by Elliot Aronson and his students at the University of Texas and the University of California. So since 1971, thousands of classrooms have used Jigsaw with great success. So it was first implemented by educators and psychologists in schools in Austin, Texas, to reduce tensions among white, Hispanic, and African-American students. Another thing, Jigsaw is a social-emotional powerhouse. As Jennifer Gonzalez describes it on her, on her Cult of Pedagogy blog, because of this interdependence, and it's been shown to reduce prejudice among students. In fact, that's why the activity was developed by Elliot Aronson and his colleagues back in the 1970s, no? So in a, so, in a school that was working through tensions and uh, that was created by disaggregation. Plus, there's all that active learning which has been shown to improve student learning over traditional lecture. So it's such a powerful technique and one that teachers and instructors should have in their teaching toolbox. Okay, so the main objective of um, Jigsaw was to encourage students to cooperate and work together and at the same time break interpersonal barriers since it involves social interaction in order for them to maximize their learning outcomes. Jigsaw is very much applicable in many social studies lessons, particularly those with content that can be broken down for different groups to analyze. So in this, Social Psychology Network and Aronson outlined 10 steps in implementing this strategy. Okay. 
Okay, so for the step one, you have to divide the students into five or six person jigsaw home groups. So the groups should be diverse in terms of gender, ethnicity, race, and ability. Step 2. Appoint one student from each group as the leader. So initially, this person should be the most mature student in the group. For the step 3, divide the day's lesson into 5 or 6 segments. For example, if you want history students to learn about Dr. Jose Rizal, you might divide a short biography of his into standalone segments on for group 1, his childhood, or for group 2, his family life, and so on and so forth. Step 4. Assign each student to learn one segment. Only one segment, ha? Make sure students have direct access only to their own segment. Step 5. Give students time to read over their segment at least twice and become familiar with it. So there is no need for them to memorize it. Step 6. Form temporary expert groups by having one student from each jigsaw home group and then join other students assigned to the same segment. So give students in these expert groups time to discuss the, the main points of their segment and to rehearse the presentations they will make to their home um, jigsaw group. Okay, so for the step 7, you have to bring the students back into their um, jigsaw home groups. And then step 8, ask each student to present her or his segment to the group. So encourage others and the group to ask questions for clarification. But here, the leader should be the one leading the flow of discussion and questions. Okay, so for the step 9, as a teacher, you have to float from group to group, ha? So you have to observe the process. Okay, so if any group is having trouble, like for instance, a member uh, is dominating or disruptive, so you have to make an appropriate intervention. So eventually, it's best for the group leader to handle this task. Leaders can be trained by whispering an instruction on how to intervene until the leader gets the hang of it. And the last step, at the end of the session, you have to give a quiz on the material. So students quickly come to realize that these sessions are not just fun and games, but really count. Okay, so this is the original jigsaw strategy that was developed by Aronson and his colleagues. So later in, different versions of the strategy were advanced by other educators today. So thus, jigsaw 2, 3, and 4 were bored, which varied the mode of grading and inserted some steps such as group review and reteaching in the process. Okay, so the jigsaw strategy is preferred by many educators because it has many benefits in the classroom. So a study conducted by Hans and Berger on 2007 showed that after implementing jigsaw, it demonstrated that students have increased feelings of autonomy and intrinsic motivations. It also promotes personal accountability of learning since students are required to master their segments independently and eventually share it with their group mates. And then the last one, this um, jigsaw strategy encourages group collaboration where, with students knowing that their information and understanding will not be complete without working and communicating with their peers. Moreover, Jigsaw instills a sense of ownership in learning, especially with the teacher acting as a mere facilitator instead of a direct transmitter of knowledge. Okay, so there are some tips in applying this um, strategy, no? 
The first one, you have to emphasize that each member has a valuable contribution to the group. So this will minimize the chances of smart students dominating the discussion while less able students talk less. So you can also rotate the leadership so that all students will be given the opportunity to lead the discussion. Um, the second one, you have to ensure that the given materials are equal length and difficulty so that they can be mastered by all students within the given time limit. So if this is not possible, you have to assign the materials based on the student's abilities. And then the third one, or and the last one, in some cases, teachers skip the formation of expert groups, believing that individually mastering the segment is enough. However, expert group is helpful, especially in clarifying points, which some students might find difficult to understand. So as much as possible, you have to allow sufficient time for interaction among expert groups to ensure reach and deep discussions among students. Okay, so assuming that you are teaching Araling Panlipunan for grade 6 and your lesson is about mga pangunahing pangkat itniko sa Mindanao. So to make the day's lesson more meaningful and interactive, all you have to do is apply the jigsaw strategy. Of course, you have to follow the, the 10 steps that I have mentioned earlier. So assuming that steps 1 to 5 are already done. So there are already 5 groups consisting 5 members each and a leader and an assigned topic to each one of them. Alright, so as you can see on the screen, the main lesson were div uh, subdivided into five segments. So let's la label each member from A to E. Ha? So for A segment, they're going to discuss about mga Muslim. And for members B, they have Bajau, while members C segment is all about mga Tausu. So mga Lumad naman for members D and Tibuli for members E. So here you have to apply step 6. Ha? You have to form temporary, uh, temporary expert groups. So here the students are going to discuss the main points of their segment and to rehearse the presentations they will make to their jigsaw home group. So, uh, and then you have to apply steps 7 to 9. So, you have to bring the students back into their jigsaw home groups and then let them share what they have learned from their expert group members. And you, as a teacher, should observe each group and you have to facilitate them uh, if ever some of the groups or, or the members are facing difficulties. And um, after the activity or the jigsaw activity, you have to give them another quiz activity ab about mga pangunahing um, pangkat etniko sa Mindanao individually na ha, assessing if the students have achieved and maximized their learning outcomes after ap applying this jigsaw strategy. So here, you will also see if effective ba yung ginamit mo na strategy, which is jigsaw strategy. Alright, so for further and wider understanding about Jigsaw, you can watch this video about what Jigsaw is. Alright, here it is. Jigsaw is an instructional strategy that is not only named after the process of putting together many pieces to form one cohesive picture, but models that process as well. During a jigsaw, students disperse from their original team and work in small groups on a common task to become experts on a single topic that is part of a larger focus area either in a lesson or a unit. For example, if the larger focus area is a tree, the subtopics could be leaves, roots, trunk and branches, and fruit. In this example, the class would be divided into teams of four. Each team member would then be assigned one of those parts of the tree to research. In a team of four, one student would be assigned to the leaves, another to the roots, a third to the trunk and branches, and the remaining student to the fruit. At the start of the jigsaw, each student would disperse from their teams to join their focus group. As a result, each student who was assigned to roots in their team will move to an area and share resources to learn all relevant information about roots. 
Simultaneously, the other three focus groups would gather and share resources as well. After a set amount of time, the focus groups would return to their original teams. The students would then present their information to their team. The end result is that every student in the class would have learned about all parts of a tree while only having had to become an expert on one part. In this way, a jigsaw negates the need for extended direct instruction by the teacher, while also avoiding overwhelming students with independent research responsibilities. Generally, while jigsaws place responsibility on students to acquire and present information on a topic, this activity still requires a significant amount of preparation on the teacher's part. In order for a jigsaw to be successful, it should be highly structured and well-resourced for students. On the day of a jigsaw, much of the instruction a teacher will deliver will be about the logistics of the activity, including focus group assignments, student movement details, assignment expectations, behavior expectations, and timing. Students need to know which focus group they have been assigned to, where in the room their focus group will meet, and how long they will have to work on their deliverable. Most likely, establishing clear expectations for a deliverable, whether it is a checklist, a rubric, or a capture sheet, will require the most work on the teacher's part. Included in this preparation is the task of ensuring that each focus group has adequate access to the necessary resources to successfully complete their deliverable task. These resources could include books, other readings, videos, sound recordings, etc. The benefits of a jigsaw are multifaceted. Jigsaws promote collaboration, team building, research skills, presentation skills, independent learning, and time management. The final key component of a jigsaw is the teacher's responsibility to ensure that every student has access to and can access the information that the class is expected to know for any future performance tasks. Closing a jigsaw without some sort of whole class review and reflection is a common pitfall, especially since this is one activity that can easily take more time than was originally intended. That being said, when utilizing the jigsaw strategy, it is important to understand the time constraints of class periods and proactively plan for the possibility of the activity lasting more than one day. Ensuring content standards are met should not be sacrificed due to time, nor should the process of allowing students to develop and practice transferable skills. Jigsaws are often seen as time savers in the classroom, which has the adverse effect of cutting this rich activity short. However, the value of a jigsaw should instead be placed on the simultaneous skill development and content knowledge growth that it promotes in order to allow the class time necessary to make the most of this robust strategy. When jigsaws are practiced regularly, students become accustomed to both the process and expectations, thus improving the overall outcome of the activity as well as student buy-in. See you later. And that's all for today's lesson. But before finally ending this session, let me know if you have any questions or clarifications about Jigsaw. Please feel free to comment down below. Once again, this is your teacher Yumi. Thank you and let's call it a day. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.